All right, what is up, my friends? Welcome to Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Magic the Gathering set, complete set review. We do this for every set. I'm Jim. If you're first time here, how's it going? Welcome at that follow button. Like, comment, subscribe. Every card, constructed, limited, you name it, we're doing it. And uh, we're starting right here, right now. We do a best in show. We do an Admiral Akbar, And let's go. We're just going to start. Armory Veteran. Two mana. Orc Warrior. Two drop, for, two, two for two. As long as it's equipped, it has Menace. Um, just your kind of filler, filler aggro common. You know, the, the Menace part is... It's all right, um, but realistically, menace on larger creatures is a little awkward because typically they'll, they'll want to double block a 4-4 four, four anyway. So if you put an equipment on this, make it a 4-4, four, four. now it has menace, but they have to block with their two creatures anyway to kill it. So the ability feels like, almost like flavor text, but um, if you want, if you, if you want an, ag an aggro 2 drop for your deck, this card's certainly reasonable, obviously. So the time of the orcs is here. Up next is Barbarian class. One red. If you would roll one or more dice, what does being a Barbarian have to do with dice? Can somebody answer me that, please? Uh, if you would roll one or more dice, instead roll that many dice plus one and ignore the lowest roll. So basically you get to roll two dice, pick the highest one. So it increases your odds by 50%, right? Ross, Ross is in chat. Ross, how does the math work on this one? Huh? Ross? And then uh, for two mana, you can go to level two. Whenever you roll one or more dice, a creature you control gets plus two plus zero and gets menace on a turn. That's that's a pretty good payoff, actually. Barbarians love craps, bro. <laughs> that is true. I was in the, in the casino on Tuesday and there was a barbarian playing craps. He's being very loud. Uh, and then level three is creatures you control have haste, which is okay. Chapter two is really good here. Um, the blue red limit, limited mechanic is based around um, dice rolls and things like that. So... Plus two plus zero menace is very real. Uh, is very very real. So if you get to play your th your your four mana three, 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 three flyer and just like give a random creature menace, kind of cool. And then haste is also pretty cool too. So um, yeah, I mean this card seems like a pretty solid limited card. Honestly, it doesn't actually replace itself in any way where you're not getting any material from this card. It is only making your other cards better. But I think it does so at a reasonable enough rate and with enough upside as long as you're rolling dice very often that this feels like a pretty decent uh, archetype enabling and un uncommon. Uh, you don't just put this card in your deck if you're just like playing whatever, but if you are playing the specific blue-red dice rolling deck and have a lot of dice roll effects, this card does seem quite good. This card does seem quite good. Constructed, someone's going to try it and it's not going to work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Battle Cry Goblin. Oh, we love goblins. Let's hear it for the goblin, huh? Mog Monday! <laughs> two mana for a 2-2 two, two goblin. Two mana, goblins in control, get plus one plus zero, and gain haste on a turn. It's pretty good. Pack tactics. Now it's funny because the because we keep seeing all of these like fake keyword like flavor cards or flavor names. When we actually see a keyword, now we're like, oh, pack tactics. That's not a keyword. It is a keyword. Pack tactics means that whenever this creature attacks, if you attack with creature's power six or greater, you get a bonus. Right, and the bonus here is to make a 1-1 one, one goblin creature tapped and attacking. That's pretty good, honestly. That's pretty good. So um, this card is nice. Um, this card is bonkers and limited because the upside you get for this 2-drop is just amazing. Late in the game, you can pump your entire team a lot. Um, obviously, you don't have all goblins necessarily, but even this bumping itself is pretty good. If it's just like 2 mana, pump it up to 1 power, it's fine. It can have haste later in the game, which is super cool. Um... It can help pump itself for its pack tactics, which is super cool. It can pump the tokens it makes, which is super cool. This is just a super cool uh, two drop. Mog Monday, I'm definitely gonna see this card on future Mog Monday. I guarantee that. Um, this card's cool. I like it a lot. Um, it is obviously a little limited as far as goblins go, but feels like a great draft card, a solid constructed card. I'm all about it. Probably needs to wait for Stomp to rotate, as uh, as most things do. But um, I think this card's really really cool. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. They ran away to say Goblin Warchief. Yeah. They just battle cry goblin. They really the names of a set are pretty simple. Brattle Battle Cry Goblin. Brazen Dwarf. Green Dragon. You know? Very, very simple. So card's great. Like it a lot. Up next is Boots of Speed. One red for an equipment. Plus one plus oh, haste equip one. This card I actually like. I think that a lot of the equipments we see 
in the set and in general are very overcosted and clunky. This is anything but. Uh, one mana to play, one mana to equip. Plus one plus zero is a reasonable enough buff. And then haste is also going to change the way your opponent plays the game. Um, if this card is in play, your opponent needs to play more defensively unless they are at a very high life total. You know, so they think they're, you know, in safe, all of a sudden some 5-5 five, five comes in with haste and just kills them. So th the effect this card is going to have is going to be greater than the effect it will actually have on the game. It's just going to change the way your opponents play, which makes her a pretty good draft card. Um, I probably wouldn't want this card just by itself, but I think if you have some, uh, some artifact or equipment synergy cards in your deck, this card is probably going to be very, very good and limited. Um, I like this card a lot. Constructed, it's cheap enough, but probably not. Um, but I don't think it's outlandish that this card's not play in, in Constructed because it is so cheap and efficiency is so important. So I like this card. Card's cool. Card's cool. Up next is Brazen Dwarf. Uh, two mana for a 1-3. Whenever you roll one or more dice, it deals one damage to each opponent. So middling payoff for your dice roll deck. Uh, one damage is okay. A 1-3 for two is okay. Um, this thing, say you roll three dice over the course of the game and deal three damage, that makes this card pretty reasonable, uh, but not super exciting. Just like an archetype filler kind of card. Not really uh, too amazing. If it if it dealt one damage for each dice rolled, so for example, if you had Barbarian class in play and rolled an extra dice and it dealt two damage, then I think we'd be, we'd be, we'd be talking here as far as like a real deep archetype card. As it stands, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> Wedge wants to know if I'm allowed to just roll dice for fun. Uh, I guess you can. I guess you can, right? We just roll. I'm gonna roll die. That's like when uh when uh, I was first started playing Magic, me and my buddy Matt were playing, and I was like, "Can I just discard a card?" He's like, "What?" I'm like, "Well, I mean, discarding a card is bad, right? Can I just do it whenever I want to?" He's like, "Okay." And I put some card in my graveyard and like use some ability for it. You know, <laughs> like just, you can't you can't do that. You can't do that. Up next is Burning Hands. This is the uh, the green color hoser in red. Two mana for an instant. Deals two damage to a creature or planeswalker, which is passable. If it's green, it deals six. This card is huge. Huge and constructed. And you want to know why? His name is Elder Gargaroth. And this thing says... Get off my plane. Red had no good answer to Elder Gargaroth. Just an absolute house of a card against red decks. And uh, this is two mana for a super clean kill on it that also is very useful otherwise. Um, great cyborg card. Great cyborg card for mono red decks. Uh, in limited, this is a high pick no matter what because a shock is fine. I've been saying, I've been talking about how the uh, the color hosers are pretty high picks in limited because they're so much better when you actually board them in than any replacement level card. But this card's actually just good in limited in general. It's just a shock. So, um, finally, an answer to Oka. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, super solid sideboard card, great draft card, phenomenal. This is a card you're gonna main deck in your draft in your draft deck all the time, and it's gonna be out of this world good, you know, forty percent of the time. So, um, yeah, good card, good draft, good good sideboard card. Not much to say. Chaos Channeler is next. Four mana for a four three, which is fine. Whenever it attacks, you roll a d twenty. Uh, on a one through nine, you exile the top card of your library. You may play it this turn. Very good. Uh, Ten through nineteen, exile top two, natural twenty, uh, top three. This feels like the ardent whatever speaker in Strixhaven for one less mana with no like downside. This card seems phenomenal in limited um, because you're going to get two cards off it like a decent amount of a time. And even if you attack with this, you exile one card and it trades in combat, you are up. And that's like, that's, that's like the floor for the most part. So very, very good draft common, un uh, uncommon, whether you're the dice roll deck or not. Some of these dice roll cards feel like they're good archetype wise. This card is just good on rate. Uh, and then in the archetype itself, this card's gonna be phenomenal. So I think this card's really, really good. Uh, just very, very good card. Like it a lot. Very, very high quality uncommon. Constructed, no, but very, very high quality limited card. Critical hit. Get it? It's like a, a reference to D to D. &D. Even I know that one, all right? Two mana instant. Target gains double strike on the turn. Whenever you roll a natural 20, return a critical hit from your graveyard to your hand. Very, very clever. Very, very clever. Yes. Um, this kind of card does see play occasionally. Uh, no trample, of course. There is the, the card that doubles power in the format, which is probably just 
better than this if you're trying to like combo kill your opponent because those stack together. Or if you have two of them, it doubles it, then doubles it again. Um, uh, but similar, with no trample, this card's not that exciting. Uh, the Nat 20 thing is like almost completely irrelevant, except for maybe limited. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this card is like, you know, it's 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 a combo card. You know, cards like Clever Loom Mancer are in the format. So like this could be a thing, but it's pretty narrow and constructed. And then in limited, this card seems fine, honestly. I have a 4-4, you have a 4-4, I attack, I give a double strike. Or I have a 5-5, you don't block it, ha ha ha, you're dead. You know, so um, definitely a card that could see play. And obviously, if you're playing like red green in standard, if you have trample or things like that, it could be good as well. So, um, role player for sure, but but reasonable, reasonable. Up next is Delina Wild Mage. We have a a Splinter Twin situation. Four mana for a three two. Whenever it attacks, you roll a die. One to fourteen, you create a tapped and attacking token. That's a copy of a creature you control, except it's not legendary, and it goes away at the end of combat. If you roll 15 to 20, you do that effect and then roll again. So obviously if you roll really good here, you could have like 10 copies of things attacking and stuff like that. Um, this card is very fun, definitely super good and limited um, because the effect is very reasonable. Uh, super cool, it comes into play effects. If you copy the two one that draws a card, super awesome, things like that. Um, very good with your uh, your dice roll effects if you're able to manipulate the rolls here and get that you know 15 to 20 range. That's really awesome. Uh, don't play this card in constructed. Um, it's a three two for four. Doesn't affect, that doesn't affect the board at all when it comes into play. You know that's just not good enough. Uh, but definitely a really cool limited card. Very fun card. You do a lot of fun things with it. But as far as like competitive constructed goes, it's just not going to get there probably. Um, if you have some way to give it haste, maybe um, the red plants one gives haste. Sure, but he copy legends also, which is kind of cool. But yeah, pretty fun card, obviously. Um, and the errata is to may roll again. Oh, you don't have to roll again. Okay, sure, sure. So uh, yeah, cool limited card, funky constructed card, but not super, uh, not super great. Dragon's fire. Best in show, this is just the most playable card in red in the whole set. Um, it's not super flashy or exciting, but this card's real freaking good. Two mana instant. The floor here is essentially Scorching Dragon Fire besides, uh, besides the, uh, the exile effect. Um, that's a really good floor. The upside is this deals four or five damage, which is so good for two mana, it's unreal. Uh, just very, very good. Uh, you need to reveal a dragon or choose a dragon we have. Um, obviously, Goldspan Dragon is a card in the format. The the fact that the the fall best of show, best in show, whatever. Uh, the fact that the, the the fail state of this is very very solid and it only scales up as your dragons improve. Uh, these are super super solid. I like this card a lot. Um, just like there's not much to say really. It's just like a really really solid common. Uh, phenomenal limited, super high pick. Uh, but yeah, just a really, really good, really, really good card. This is the card that's going to see the most play in red, I think, for sure. Face of Saban is kind of a cool one, sure. Um, you can kill Lovestruck Beast with the, the five power dragon, absolutely. Red often struggles with larger creatures. You know, that four toughness, five toughness range can be really tough. And, uh, and this solves that problem without needing to resort to like soul seer or like some like three mana card or some narrow card that doesn't do a lot sorcery speed so instant speed super high quality i know it's not very flashy or exciting but uh that's definitely best in show for sure for sure up next is dueling uh rapier is that how you say that one red for an equipment it has flash and when it comes into play you attach it immediately Creature gets plus two, plus oh. That's nice, honestly. That's, that's pretty solid. It does equip for four, though. And four is a lot. Rapier, rapier. Uh, it is a, it is a four mana equip is a lot. So a lot of the value of this card is going to be on that initial cast. It's like a, a pseudo sort of trip or trick, I mean. Um, once the creature dies, now we have this thing kind of just like sitting there and we can equip it later if we're like flooded and stuff like that. Feels like a card that's going to be good specifically on either First Strikers or the Synergy cards that want to have equipment. 
Um, without that element, it's a little less exciting. Obviously, better in sealed. Better if you have mana, if you need a mana sink, things like that. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of like these low impact equipments in this set. There's just so many of them. I don't feel like there's much pressure to draft them because if you are the equipment deck, you don't want to have 12 equipment in your deck, you know? Like so, there's a lot of competition and not a lot of desire for them. So it, it seems fine, but yeah, it's it's all right. And then constructed, I mean, probably not. Although realistically, a one mana free equip is cheap enough that if there was some sort of need for this card, I could see it. Um, and then also, I suppose that, um, I suppose that, uh, the one drop, the red card, Forever Champion, also equipped this card for only one, which is kind of cool too, so, I wouldn't be surprised if this card saw some play, but, next up is Earth Cult Elemental, six mana for a six six, which is fine, uh, comes into play, roll a d20, uh, on one through nine, each player sacks permanent, ten through nineteen, each opponent sacks permanent, and then that twenty, opponent sacrifices two permanents, uh, if you need a curve topper in, in your draft, I guess okay. You know, each player sacking a permanent is not like super ideal. Uh, so half the time it'll be okay, but pretty pretty middling. You know, curve topper. Um, if you're playing a dice roll deck, I feel like if you're playing a dice roll deck, the dice roll itself is more important than the result. As a result here is pretty irrelevant. Uh, but yeah, kind of just a middling. If you need a six drop, you'll play it. I imagine you'll play, but you'll not play this card more often than you'll play it. But this is six drop. Up next is Farida's Fireball. Red, red, three for an instant. Deals five damage to a creature or planeswalker. Roll d20. And then uh, one through nine, two to each player. Ten through twenty, two to each opponent. So it's an okay kill spell. Five mana is a lot to deal only five damage. But it's a kill spell. It's an instant. I don't like that it damages you half the time. Simply if you're playing a kill spell, you're trying to like stabilize the game and so on and so forth. Although occasionally, I guess like... It, I guess it always deals two to your opponent. So in that respect, it's like a more aggressive card. Uh, but yeah, I mean, these sort of like five mana kill spells are, you know, your bread and butter for limited. I don't think I'd want like a ton of this card, but it's definitely pretty solid. Fine turf, curve topper. It's just it's fine. Just a solid, solid draft common, you know? Um, Flame Skull is next. And this is a pretty cool card that I think is going to play worse than it looks. Red, red, one for a flying skeleton, 3-1, that can't block. That part's very important. Whenever this card dies, you get to exile it. If you do, exile the top card of your library. Till the end of your next turn, you may play one of those cards. Either play the card you exiled or the flame skull. So basically, if this dies, you can just play it again next turn, every turn. Seems very good against decks that are very reliant on removal. Otherwise, it doesn't really affect the board very much. Um, so it's kind of like a, a, a much worse Skyclave Shade in that way, where it's a three drop and a two drop. Um, you know, you only have a short window to play it again. So if you have a plan for your next turn, now you're stuck like having to play this card or something else. Um, it's pretty cool with Sack Outlets, where like you can sacrifice it, you can replay it, sacrifice it, replay it. It's kind of cool too. But Overall, I think this card is, is mostly just like a cyborg kind of card for against control decks and things like that. Uh, not super pumped about it. If this card had haste, we're off to the races, folks. This card is insanely good. But without haste, without being able to block, uh, I just think this card is pretty pretty unexciting. I'm not really, not really a believer. And then in limited, if your deck is aggressive, this card seems good. But... Camp block is a really real drawback in limited. Uh, so if your deck is more defensive or you're playing it's an aggro deck, I'd be scared to play this card. Uh, but very, very good if you're on the on the offensive. So kind of a weird card. Certainly plays pretty weird. Um, just weird. Looks cool though. Cool name, Flame Skull. Up next is Goblin Javelin Lanier. Raging Goblin is rolling over in its grave right now. One red for a 1-1 one, one haste. Whenever it's blocked, it does one damage to a target because you're blocking it. So effectively, it's a two-one in combat. Um, I guess it, it also can can be blocked by. Uh, all right, it's, it's a it's a one-one double striker in combat. I guess without the bonuses of, of double strike, where they can't block with a two-one, uh, but it will also can attack into a three-two, which is kind of cool. Uh, that being said, raging goblin's not very exciting. So uh, you're not gonna have to be really really aggressive to want this card. It wears equipment okay. Plays okay with Battle Cry Goblin. Uh, it just, it just a, 
uh, you know, like a, a, a fillery kind of, you know, one drop if you're really, really aggressive. Uh, it is important to note that it is fine with equipment. So you can pump it up a little bit, but not that exciting. And then in, in, in Constructed, um, I'm sure I'll play this card on Mog Monday when I'm playing Goblins and Standard. I just need a playable card, but it's not particularly good. Goblin Morning Star is next. Two mana for an equipment. Creature gets plus one plus zero and trample, which is fine. Equips for two, which is fine. Comes into play, you roll a d20. One through nine, make a goblin. Ten through twenty, you get to make the goblin with the Morning Star already on it. Now, in that case, this card's very good. Uh, similar to, I forgot the name of it. Uh, Ancestral Blade, maybe. Where if this is just a two-one trample for two that leaves behind an equipment. That's really good, actually. That's like a really, really solid uh, effect. And then Trample matters later in the game. And then uh, that's good. You know, the equip cost is a little higher. The problem is it isn't always that. Occasionally, just a 1-1 one, one Goblin and the equipment. It's probably still a very good, very, very uh, solid draft card. And that like, this is a good equipment. It makes a creature. It can be really good. And then just Trample is a good ability to have later in the game. It scales up pretty well. Uh, the equip cost is manageable. Uh, so I think this is a, a pretty solid draft on common, uh, that's probably not good enough for constructed, but I think if it's, if they give it equipped every time, it would be a possible constructed card, but as it stands, solid draft card, solid draft card, Goblin's taking a snooze here, I like him, he's cool, I like him. Up next is Hoarding Ogre, 4 mana for a 3-3, whenever it attacks, you roll a dice, make a treasure, make two treasures, make, two treasures, make three treasures, so... The real draw to this card, once again, is that the die rolls are almost more of a benefit than the actual effects are. Making a, making a treasure is cool. That's fine. But this thing can repeatedly trigger your dice roll effects, which is great. Um, got a big smile, too. So this seems like a, a fine archetype card for your die roll deck. It's not very good, you know, just a hill giant otherwise. So if I'm not die rolling for value, I'm not excited about it. It also makes treasures, which is kind of cool. So, like, if you're the treasure deck... That's kind of a, a way to do that too. So it's kind of like a, it's like an archetype card for two different archetypes, but not very exciting overall. Uh, so it's a draft fillery card. Seems okay. Seems okay. Up next is Hobgoblin Bandit Lord, a new Goblin Lord. Red, red one for a two, three. I think that third toughness is like pretty important. Uh, it's a Lord for Goblins. And then one red Hobgoblin Bandit Lord deals damage equal to the number of Goblins that enter the battlefield under your control this turn to any target. Now, when I read this card, I just assumed it was to a player. Any target is busted. That's awesome. So you play a goblin and you get to ping something for one later on, or, or two. That's really, really, it's sort of like a goblin Grim Lobomancer. So this card is super sweet. Uh, likes card a lot. And um, uh, I don't know if it's going to playable goblins in the format to make a goblin deck. But between this and Battlecry Goblin, I feel like we're kind of close. So Mod Monday, this Monday, is going to be standard goblins. You can bet your butt on it. And uh, we'll see how good it is. But definitely a pretty good lord. Again, that third top is very important. And uh, I don't think this is relevant in older formats. Um, because I don't think that a lord is good enough. And the ability isn't good enough either. But cool card for standard. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. In limited, totally reasonable. Um, there are a lot of goblins. Just like coincidentally in the set anyway. And if this ever deals a damage or something. Or two damage or something like that. That's pretty awesome too. So if you have Cranko going, folks, guess what? You're already winning the game. You don't need Hobgoblin Bandit Lord to make your uh, Cranko any better. All right. So pretty cool. Pretty cool card. Up next is Hobgoblin Captain. And this card seems really, really good. Two mana for a 3-1. Pack Tactics. So whenever you attack with this, if six total power or more are also attacking, this gets first strike. A uh, 3-1 first strike for two is phenomenal. Unbelievably good uh, aggressive card in limited. Uh, constructed, I mean, probably not. Probably not. But as far as limited goes, uh, this card is just phenomenal. Uh, super good. Premium two drop for your aggro decks. Uh, very hard to block. Just a solid, solid card. I like this card a lot. Uh, very, very good draft card. A lot of good red aggro cards in this set for your draft decks. So super cool card. Like it a lot. Up next is Hulking Bugbear and uh, Bogart Ram Gang. It's a bit of, bit of a downgrade here. Red, red one for a 3-3 three, three with haste to Goblin. Uh, solid draft card. I mean, a 3-3 three, three, three haste for a 3 is certainly very good in limited. 
Uh, constructed, not really. You know, there's a lot of these already available, honestly. It was like that legendary brow bow thing or whatever. Um, don't think there's enough goblin synergy to make this card relevant. This card would need some sort of major synergy to be good. You know, the, the Arnie Broken Bow brow card was good in the in the, in the Gruul uh, Legend deck that I played on 10, 10 New Brews because it's a Legend. But this doesn't have that. You know, this is just a vanilla 3-3. Three, three. So the Goblin typing here has to be really relevant for this card to ever make it constructed. But um, limited solid card. Solid beatdown card. Curving uh, curving Hobgoblin Captain into Hulking Bugbear is going to be a really good limited start. I tend to win a lot of games. I tend to win a lot of games. Up next is Improvised Weaponry, a.k.a. Uh, one mode on Prismari Command. Three mana for a Sorcery. Deal two, make a treasure. Feels like more of an archetype card. I don't think I would play this card just like in any red deck in, in Limited because a two mana or a three mana sorcerer Speed Shock is pretty, pretty mopey. Uh, but if you're playing the treasure deck, that's pretty sweet. Uh, you get to kill a creature, you get a treasure for, your, for your, all your treasure stuff. Uh, so I think this card is pretty solid in that deck in particular. Again, more of an archetype kind of card where not every deck wants this card, but the ones that do want it will want it for, you know, You'll want it pretty reasonably, honestly. You know, I imagine the the red black treasure deck would play as many of these as it can get its hand on. So, solid uh, thing. Inferno of Star Mounts. It's a trap, folks. It is not the year two thousand and one. Rourke's Blade Wing is not a playable card in standard. All right. Um, I saw Mike Flores, bless his heart, uh, tweet, tweet, tweet about this card. Referencing Rourke's Blade Wing. And Mike is, you know, a geni genius of the game, fellow cool stuff writer, but it's not the year 2001, all right? Rourke's Blade Wing, for those who don't know, was a uh, one of the pit legends in the Onslaught set about a million years ago. And Rourke's was a 6 5 haster for Red, Red, Red 3. And at the time, that was like a an unbelievably powerful 6 drop. It saw play in Block Instructed, saw play in Standard. There were even some reanimator decks that would reanimate it before Akroma came out. Um, we are pretty far past that point in Magic's history. Uh, so a 6-6 six, six flying haste for 6 is not good. Um, it has the can't be countered clause, but any deck that's playing counter spells is also playing removal, and this has no protection at all. Um, it's easy to see this card and sort of think, oh, Carnage Tyrant, cool. This is not Carnage Tyrant, all right? This is a 6-6 six, six and a die to their Doom Blade, and uh, as long as it's not the, the kill word card ever, uh, it looks flashy. It looks fancy. Um, I love Rourke's Blade Wing. I'm sure Ross and Miriam in chat loves Rourke's Blade Wing. Uh, but those times have passed. Um, if this card was printed in the year 2003, it'd be really good. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you have infinite mana, sure, it's a grape shot. That's fine. But there are many other ways to win the game with infinite mana for sure. So it's a cool card. An absolute ground shattering bomb and limited this is a 6-6 six, six flying haste is insane and limited but uh all in all this card is not going to see play in competitive constructed probably at any point unless for some reason there's some weird like mono blue counter spell deck that can't kill a 6-6 six, six, which i think would be pretty unlikely so uh akbar akbar is jumping in here ross Merriam says this card would have been unplayable in 2003 exactly Jaded Sellsword. Now, this is a card, uh, as far as limited goes. A common dragon. I, I find this so jarring as a non-D&D person. That they're just like these random dragon warrior people, like as commons. Like, dragon's supposed to be like, rawr, I'm a dragon. I'm really, really important and stuff. Uh, and uh, sure, whatever. So, four mana for a 4-3. If you use a treasure, it has haste and first strike until end of turn. That is an absolute beating. Um, a 4-3 haste first striker... Uh, for four mana is an amazing limited card. So um, very, very good draft card. Again, if you are the archetype of treasures. Uh, if you're not, it's a four through, isn't that bad? But if you are that particular archetype, this card seems like a premium card for it. And I like that. I like how a lot of these cards are good in some decks and not in others. That's a lot of the reasons why the draft formats of the last few years have been so good. Because there aren't just good cards and bad cards. There are good cards for certain decks. And some decks want this card, some decks don't, which is pretty cool pretty cool up next is kick in the door one red sorcery put a counter on a creature it gains haste can't be blocked by walls and then most importantly venture into a dungeon i don't think this card is worth the uh 
worth a mana here. So we have one, or worth a card, I mean. Uh, one mana is fine, but putting a counter on a creature, giving it haste is all kind of eh. Uh, I feel like the red decks aren't that interested in venturing into, 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 into a dungeon. Uh, this card seems pretty trashy to me. I'm not really about it. Uh, I don't think you're, uh, even though it has a lot of words on it, I still don't think you're getting, you're getting one mana worth of value here. So, could be wrong. Could be wrong, but not really about it. Up next is Magic Missile. Red, red, one. Can't be countered. Arc Lightning. Uh, cool card because it Ward has become a much more popular mechanic these days. And uh, this gets around Ward, which is pretty cool. So, because the Ward ability actually counters the ability. So, that's kind of sweet. And um, Arc Lightning is a good card, honestly. Probably a sideboard card in standard. Um, but being able to kill multiple small creatures is very, very powerful. Uh, Arc Lightning saw a decent amount of play last time it was legal and standard. So, super cool card. Like it a lot. Uh, very good and limited, obviously. Um, Arc Lightning is a busted limited card. But, uh, yeah. We'll see play. Fringe play and standard. Top notch limited card. And pretty cool. Pretty cool. Up next is Meteor Swarm. Red, red, red X. Sorcery. It deals 8 damage divided as you choose among X target creatures or planeswalkers. Kind of similar to Shatter Skull Smashing, honestly. Um, well, not, not a land, obviously, but this is an absolutely busted limited card. Um, you're going to cast this and win the game that turn or the next turn a lot of the time. Um, at five or six mana, this is just a, a really, really powerful effect. I don't really see construct in, construct, uh, this in Constructed because it just you just play, Shatter Skull, just play Shatter Skull Smashing. I can't talk today, folks. I'm sorry. Just too much talking lately. Um... But, uh, yeah, in limited, an absolute bomb. This is kind of like your flame wave. You know, your your limited red mess card advantage removal spell. That's not going to be great constructed. It just isn't what it is, you know. Up next is Minion of the Mighty. And uh, this card sucks. <laughs> one red for an 0-1 menace. If this attacks with a total of six power creature or, or pack tactics, you can put a dragon from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Um, if it pulled the dragon out of your deck, sure. But the dragon needs to actually be in your hand. So many things need to go right on this one mana 01 for it to actually do anything. And you don't even win the game when you do it. Uh, so this, it's fun. It's a super, like, like fun, like against the odds, you know, meme kind of card for sure. But uh, I don't see this card being reasonable. The one, one caveat, caveat to that is in, uh, in modern, we have a card like Scale Up or something like that. But again, like, just play Infect. Why Why are you playing Minion of the Mighty? Why are you playing an 0-1 for one and then also having to play dragons that need to be in your hand? So now it's a three-card combo. It's the Minion, it's the Pump Spell, and the Dragon in your hand. If it didn't get the Dragon in your hand, if, if, it, if it pulled the Dragon out of your deck, I actually would be all about this card in more broken formats. But, um, but yeah, I mean... It's just, it's just too, there's just too many things happening here. Just too many things happening. It's a fun card. It's cute. It's funny if it exists, but um, not really a card you should play in, in basically anything if your goal is to win the game. Um, up next is Orb of Dragon Kind. And this card is actually very close to me, uh, to, our, to our Admiral Akbar. Um, I think this card's a trap, folks. I think this card looks really, really good. Two mana artifacts. Pay one to add two mana of any any combination of colors to cast only dragons or activate abilities of dragons. And then you can pay a red to sack it and go find a dragon in your top seven. So sort of like a super mind stone for dragons. The problem here is that it's only a mana rock for actual dragons. And you can only play so many dragons in your deck. Uh, and then if you don't draw the orb, then you're like, it's not always over the dragons in your deck. And I think that this is just too awkward to play. I think it's too unreliable as a mana producer, even though it is very awesome as a kind of a Mind Stone, like find the late thing. Um, I think you would need to be playing like 16 dragons or more in your deck to want to play this card uh, in order to get the amount of consistency you would need. You know, this card is not cast, um, whatever, it doesn't, it doesn't cast a Draconic Roar, doesn't cat doesn't cat doesn't cast um all runs epiphany doesn't cast like a lot of stuff you know so there's a matter off for dragons and instant sorceries oh uh, that, that's that's pretty cool actually that is pretty sweet so ross brings up a good point for once in his uh, entire life <laughs> i love dunking on ross because i got the microphone he doesn't uh was galzeth prismari 
you can tap this for mana for instant sorceries. That is actually really cool. That's actually a very, very cool interaction. Um, so I like that one. That is definitely reasonable as a way to use this for things that aren't dragons. So I like that. That's cool. But on the whole, I'm, I think this card will play a lot worse than it reads. That's my impression. That's my impression. Yeah, if Dragon Breath was a dragon tribal spell and this could cast it, all of a sudden I'm like, I'm now I'm on board for totally. But uh, on that awkward turn like three and four, where you play this on turn two, can't use it for mana for a dragon yet, need to play an interactive spell and it kind of just sits there, not really happy about it. Not really happy about it. So I think this card uh, is an overblown kind of uh, kind of stinker, honestly. Even though I like the card. It looks cool. It reads really good, but I don't think it's that good. And then it limited yourself playing this card. So, Plundering Barbarian. 3 mana for a 2-2. Two, two. When it comes into play, you can make it destroy an artifact or make a treasure. Uh, feels like a solid draft card for the archetype of treasure stuff. Um, you know, it's effectively a 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. Uh, killing an artifact will be, will, be, will be relevant occasionally. There are equipments and things like that. And then uh, making, making a treasure is pretty cool too. Uh, fun art, obviously. Pretty cool. So, I'm not sure why you would smash the chest. I don't know what... Like, why would you do that? Just open it first, right? So, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Cool draft card. Uh, up next is Price of Loyalty. The mana for a sorcery. It's a threaten. But if you spent a treasure, it gets plus two, plus oh. There aren't really any, many sack outlets in Limited, which is usually what this card would be used for. Um, because... Uh, um, that's the, like, the main, like, very often the red-black archetype in Limited is, like, sacrifice, so it's like, I threaten your creature, I sack it to this. There is the, the common two-drop, I suppose, which is pretty good, uh, in black, that can sack a creature, so I suppose, you know, if you end up in that sort of deck, this could be a playable card, but it's not, doesn't really feel supported, and aside from that, it's not very exciting, so it's a threaten, you know? Up next is the very, very cleverly named Red Dragon, because it, it, it's red, it's just... It's just, that's the that's that's the that's the name of the card, I guess. Red Red Four for a four four flyer comes into play. Deal four to your opponent. And even though this card is technically better than Volcanic Dragon, which is a six mana four four dragon with haste, um, doesn't feel as as cool, you know? Like play a haster, slam it in the red zone. Like I love when you play a creature that has haste. And you play it tapped already in the red zone. Who else does that? Raise your hand in chat. You two folks, comment of a day. Um, you know, you play your Firewalker or whatever, your Goblin War Chief. You don't put it down and then tap it and put it in the red zone. You just put it down in your opponent's face, tapped already attacking. I like that. That's fun, you know? This card can't do that. So even though it's a better card, obviously this card's very, very good and limited. Um, dealing four to your opponent's amazing. A uh, 4 4 flyer for, for, for sticks is totally reasonable. Uh, but. Yeah, I suppose if you can give this card haste, it basically has, like, double haste, uh, which is kind of cool. But, yeah, great draft card. Uh, obviously not playable in Constructed, but very, very top, high-level uh, draft card for sure. And good in aggressive decks, control decks. Just a very, very solid card and limited, obviously, as most sick mana dragons are. Up next is Rust Monster. Rust Monster? Is that a real card? Uh, three mana for a 2-1 first strike. Second artifact, plus 2, plus 0. Oh. So sort of like the, you know, the, the atog part of your treasure deck, I suppose. Um, you can also sacrifice your equipments and things like that. I don't think, it, there's like a few artifact things in this set, but they don't feel fleshed out enough to be like a full theme. It's kind of weird, honestly. I don't really get it. I don't understand why there's like, no, like half artifact theme and half not. It's not like there's like artifact stuff already in the format, really, so... This card, I mean, it could see play in Standard if, like, you wanted this effect, but I think as a 3-mana 2-1, it's not very exciting, so... Yeah, feels like mostly a Synergy card for your, your treasure deck in uh, in Limited and otherwise not very exciting. Atog. I think if this was a 2-mana 1-2, like Atog, it would be much more likely to see play Constructed, but much worse in Limited, so... Swarming Goblins! We love our Goblins! Let's hear it for Goblins! Let's go. Waka, waka. Six mana, or six mana, five mana for a four, three. Roll a dice. You get one goblin, two goblins, or three goblins. Uh, this card's this card's sweet, honestly. Like, a four, three that makes one, one, one is, like, already kind of reasonable. You're more likely to get two or three, and that's really good. Uh, it's a dice roll card, which is super cool. 
Uh, so it's good in your 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 is it decks. Um, just a solid curve topper, honestly. And then um, there's also there's also multiple goblin synergy cards in the set too, like Battlecry goblins. So Ross Ross is here to tell us you'll get 1.6 goblins on average. No! 1.6 goblins on average. That's pretty good, honestly. You know, 0.6 of a goblin is pretty sweet. So um, so yeah, cool 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 common for limited. Obviously not incredible or anything, but like solid draft common, and uh, it's cool. I like it. Tiger Tribe Hunter. Red, red, three for a 4 4 trample. Pack Tactics. So if you attack with this for six or more power, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, the Tribe Hunter deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power. Start a creature. This feels like a really good draft card. Um, the ability to fling your creatures at other creatures is quite good. It's a 4 4 trample for five, which is fine. Um, if this thing could go to face, I think it would be like a tier one, you know, draft card, like mythic uncommon level, but only flings for creatures. Still pretty good though. Still pretty good. Uh -huh. <laughs> that is the most obscure joke I've ever heard in my entire life. I got So Optimators in chat, someone asked, how do you get half a goblin? And Optimator says, Shivan Harvest. And this is like, just some... I mean, I'm sorry, folks. We're just stopping the set review right now. Oops. Shivan Harvest. Shivan Harvest is like a really obscure uh, comment or whatever, uncommon from Invasion about, and the art is chopping a goblin in half. I just got to get some respect, all right? That just, that just, uh, that is so much effort for a joke that almost nobody would get. And I, I just got to, I got to throw some props in there. What's here for, uh, here for Optimator? <laughs> That's a deep cut. That's a deep cut. Like, that card's so... That card's like 20 years old. It never seen play anything in its entire life. Well played. Well played. I'm spitting all over myself now. That's perfect. Uh, we'll keep going on the set review, all right? So, yeah. Very, very solid uh, limited uncommon for your aggressive deck. Um, you know, if you sack your 3-3 three, three to kill their 3-3 three, 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 three flyer, it's pretty good. So, I like it. I like it. Up next is Unexpected Windfall. Red, red, 2 for an instant. Uh, additional cost, just discard a card, draw two, and make two treasures. If this card sees play, it's going to be in the Throne Sword of Combo deck. Um, on rate, you know, thrill of possibility for four mana is not very exciting. Obviously, you're getting two of it back, but the initial cost is still four, you know? So, I, I think this card is like, if there's some kind of combo deck that can, like, recast cards... And stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. Sure, but aside from that, not really for uh, for for uh, for constructed. In limited, however, you get to discard a land, draw two cards, and then make two treasures for your uh, various treasure effects. That's pretty good. So this card is great with Goldspan Dragon. Isn't that just Goldspan Dragon like being good though? <laughs> like right? Like so so yeah. So I don't know. Um, Feels like more of a synergy card for your draft deck, stuff like that. Yeah, like if you're able to make this make this cast this for free or make less, you know, whatever, you can generate if you can like generate mana off that, sure. But yeah. Um Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Not really about it. Whatever. Valor Singer. This is a three mana two three. Beginning of combat in your turn, a creature gets plus one plus oh. This card's better than it looks in limited. Um I have a two three body isn't great, but it's effectively a three three for the most part by itself. And then this can just help push your bad creatures through their better creatures. That's a very good effect to have in limited. So solid draft common if you're aggressive. Um, that's really all there is to say about it. Wish. I wish it was a little bit tall, y'all. Wish it was a baller. No one. The old ski low deep cut. Nobody. Come on, folks. Help me out here. Throw me a freaking bone. Wish is very humorous. Um, it's obviously a play on the Wish cards from Judgment. Uh, this card allows you to get any card. All right? But the downside is you got to play it right now. All right? Uh, so effectively, you can't just like Burning Wish for a spell and cast it later. And 3 mana is a lot. So this is basically a combo card where it's like a tutor for your sideboard. You're playing Rituals and you need to get your Wing Condition. Okay, I'll go get it with this card. Uh, so we'll probably see play in more broken formats, um, where you need a, a way to, you know, get your win condition. 
It could also fetch a ritual if you need it, passive flames if you need it, things like that. Uh, so definitely, uh, definitely we'll see play um, in uh, in older formats, but not really for uh, not really for uh, for standard. I don't think it'd be a, it'd be a weird spot to be for standard. So yeah, wish I was a little bit tall, y'all. Wish I was a baller. Wish I was like six foot nine. I don't know all the words, but next card is. Zorn, why is this not legendary? Is is Zorn uh is Zorn not like a, a character or something like that? Is this, is this a Zorn not the Zorn? Three mana for a three two. If you would create one or more treasure tokens and say create that many plus one, so it's like a doubling season for uh for treasures. I mean, again, I feel like this could be part of some sort of like combo in standard or some other format because realistically, if you're just generating a lot of mana, that's just a good thing to do when you're playing combo deck. What would it do? I don't really know. Uh, and limited again. I feel like I have a lot already, but like the the treasure deck seems great in that deck. Obviously, it's only a three two for three, which is not very impressive. So, I mean, for a, a scary monster from D and D, I don't know. It seems middling at best. Not very exciting. You come upon or you come to a Noel Noel camp. Two mana instant. You can intimidate them. Two creatures can't block, or you can get a pump spell plus three plus one. This feels like a reasonable card for an aggro deck in limited. Uh, the cool thing here is that neither one of these effects would be good enough by itself, but having the option to do either or is pretty big. It is pretty big. You know, you don't really want to have that like pure falter effect in your deck because it's so narrow. Like it can, it can win you the game when you're you know ahead, but it doesn't do anything when you're behind. This card can do other things too. I like that. I like that. So um. Oh, it's funny that the card... That's, a, that's infuriate, right? Never mind. Um, yeah, so definitely a card I would want to play a ton of, but it feels like a reasonable card in your in your aggressive limited deck um, as a, like a one or a two of. You find some prisoners. So we got Shatter or... Ex this is a weird one. Exile, exile the top three cards of target opponent's library. Choose one of them. Until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. You may spend mana as though or mana of any color to cast it. So, obviously, two mana for a shatter is fine. If that's what you need, whatever. But very, very hard to parse how good playing one of your opponent's spells is. Um, it is play the cards. You can't play a land also. So, it's sort of like cycling off your opponent's deck, but with some card selection too. The cool thing here is that in a format like we're currently in, where cards like the Great Henge and Embercleave are so prevalent. Why is my right arm bigger than my left? I don't know, I'm just like, how's that on flexing? I don't know, what do you want from me? I'm, I'm buff. I'm, um, I'm so out of shape. Um, so like, it's basically like a shatter with cycling, but you cycle off your opponent's deck, um, which could be good or bad. I, I don't really know, you know, and it is only until your end of your opponent's next turn. So it is also narrow in that regard. You can't just end step this on turn two and hope to play the card. So, this is mostly a shatter with upside, and if it's a shatter format, it seems pretty cool. I don't think you're playing this card just to like play it. If it didn't have the uh, if it didn't have the shatter part on it, I just don't think it's great. Um, but yeah, I, it's kind of a weird card. Uh, I think it will definitely see play in standard at some point if artifacts are prevalent. But otherwise, it's kind of weird. I guess it's also good if your opponent plays some card that puts a card on top. Sure, that's reasonable too. But yeah, they, they mystical tutor, you steal their card, sure. But yeah, kind of a weird card. Honestly, might see play in older formats for that reason. But moving on. You see a pair of goblins. <laughs> I'm a little sad I didn't preview this card. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Three mana for an instant. It's either a trumpet blast. Gives all our creatures plus two plus oh. Or a raise the alarm. And again, that's a really, really good modal spell to have because Trumpet Blast is good sometimes, but often not good. And then if it's not good, you make some tokens, make some blocks, make some attackers. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Um, so definitely a solid limited card. Uh, it's just cool. I just like it. I don't know. Just solid card. Um, if this card costs two mana, we'd be talking constructed, but a three probably not. But 
Yeah, cool card. Cool card. Zalto Giant or Fire Giant Drake. Fire Giant Duke. I can't even read. Zalto Fire Giant Duke. Uh, five mana for a 7 3. Trample. Whenever it's dealt damage, venture into the dungeon. Um, I don't think there's any sort of like deal damage to your own stuff kind of cards legal. Um, this card's kind of cool. Obviously, it's a, 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 a five mana 7 3. So, like, probably not seeing play constructed. But super cool draft card, honestly. I mean, the rate's certainly reasonable. Um, if you get to play a 7-3, they block with it, take some damage, and you venture. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So, uh, so yeah, you know, so definitely a cool draft card. Not really super cool. Possible there's some sort of, like, combo with this if you can keep damaging your own creature. But, of course, the problem is it would just die eventually. So, it's cool. I don't know, whatever. Zariel, Archduke of Avarice. I don't know why they have the... Like the the art, you can't you can sort of see it up here. But like the the chain whip thing over the text of the card, like they could have just not done that and put it somewhere else. It's like really really obnoxious, but whatever. Pretty solid planeswalker, red red two for planeswalker, four loyalty, plus one to give your creatures plus one plus zero oh, in haste, which is pretty reasonable honestly. Uh, you can zero to make a devil. And if we saw from Tibble, devils are pretty good. Devils defend pretty well. Uh, they attack pretty well. Uh, and that's just a good zero ability. You just keep doing it over and over and over again. And then minus six days, you get an emblem. At the end of your first combat phase on your turn, untap a creature. After this phase, it's an extra combat phase. Not really the most exciting ultimate, but it does get there pretty quick. But for the most part, this is just a good aggressive planeswalker. Makes creatures, gives your creatures haste, pumps the team. Uh, it's just solid. Again, not like incredible. Not like a card you're playing four of most likely. But very solid role player. And this is about the power level of Planeswalkers that I like. Uh, it's just like right there. You know, it is not incredible. You're probably not playing four of it. I think any Planeswalker that you're playing four of in your deck is a, a, is a design mistake. Like, it shouldn't be that good. It should be a role player. And this card fills that role pretty well. So, I like this card a lot. Definitely potential. Uh, possibly after rotation once Embercleave and uh, and Torbrand are gone. But, uh, wait, Torbrand's not gone. Is Torbrand gone? I don't even know. But solid card. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. And limited, absolutely busted. Uh, just insane, insane limited. Protects itself. Devils are great. Real good card. Real good card. That's it. That's it. So that's red. YouTube folks, I love you. Like, comment, subscribe. And uh, let me know your thoughts on the set. Um, am, am I wrong about my trap? Am I wrong about my best in show? You tell me, all right? Tons of other videos to watch. Check them out. We're doing, we're doing green next, all right? YouTube folks, I love you. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.